Uh, Congressman, let's talk about trade. I know we, we're, we're talking about bank deregulation as well. You're about to vote on that. But we have to remember how we got here. And I, I went back to January of 2017, uh, just before the president was inaugurated. There was a piece in Market Watch, Obama leaves Trump with need for a hard line on China and chips. In other words, the Obama administration for years was turning a blind eye to a lot of what was happening with China. They're stealing our, our trade secrets. Uh, they're, they're doing all kinds of things in terms of espionage and, and tariffs that were just unacceptable. It couldn't go on any longer, right? Right. And one, one thing you have to realize, Trump is a negotiator. The difference you see with the, the president is he is negotiating out in public, and you can't deny that we're, we're beginning to see some results. Look, I grew up in the construction industry. I understand construction people. If you want to get to the moon, you shoot for Mars. Right. And, and <laughs> you really push hard for what you want. And then all of a sudden, you may do a 180 turn to check uh, your opponent to see where they are. And I think that maybe folks are getting a little used to his negotiating tactics, which are, for the most part, Part being very successful. Yeah, well, you bring up a great point. It does come with the territory that he came from. But I, I'm looking specifically at ZT, and this was not only right. a company that was stealing our intellectual property, but it was also trading with our enemies, trading with right. Iran. Uh, the, the sanctions were there for a reason. Do they really deserve a second chance, even with a $1.3 billion fine? Well, if you look at what the president is proposing, he's saying, look, we may consider this if you get a new board of directors. And basically, he's dictating to them what you're going to do. You're going to pay a fine. You're going to get a new board of directors. And with the proper oversight, it's possibly possible something we could do. Now, look, North Korea is the real prize here. And yeah. I think everyone understands China is the one who's going to make or break a deal there. And his hard line on North Korea and his hard line on, on China, I think, has really brought them to the table on more things than we ever Although, anticipated. As, as, as we heard today, he announced that one reason that they are now balking the North Koreans at, at the summit, some of the details of the summit, might be because the Chinese told them to. So he's saying, look, you Chinese folks, you invited the North Korean leader to China, you talked to him, then he began giving us trouble on the summit, you better shape up. Yeah, and I think this this is the type of uh, rhetoric you may say you get from the White House. And look, one people one thing people are going to have to understand: he is going to negotiate. He's going to negotiate hard, and he's going to do it in the public yeah. sphere. And so, uh, I think the markets are going to have to stabilize a little bit. Look, computer trading has things more volatile, but they they recover quicker now. Uh, people are more sensitive. I think once they settle in and realize, look, there's going to be tough talk on tariffs, but he's going to back off of that as right. part of his his negotiation. Congressman, and, I, I got. I've got to ask you really quickly, because we're running out of time on the bank deregulation. The Senate has already voted in favor of it. The House is about to this evening. Uh, the critics, as you know, say that it's just going to lead to more uh, consumer problems, more Ponzi schemes, if you will, that could lead to another financial crisis, to which you say what? I say that is so far from the truth. Look, most of what this bill does is it helps the small guy, the, the small banks, the credit unions that were devastated by Dodd-Frank. Georgia lost more banks than any other state in the nation, and we still have uh, counties that do not have a bank branch at all because they've been unable to recover and build new banks. This is going to provide significant regulatory relief from Dodd-Frank, which was designed for the really large banks, but yet it applied across the board. I, I think you're going to see uh, uh, banks actually be able to meet the needs of their customers now, which they haven't been able to since Dodd-Frank. Yeah, particularly the small ones. They've been going through a tough time. Barry Loudermilk, good to see you, sir. Thank you for good being here. You. Appreciate Thanks, it. David.